Good afternoon. My name is Frédéric Rivin, and 20 years ago, I was a student at Central, so I'm really happy to be here today. I have a question for you to start with. Do you brush your teeth? Actually, I will be talking about dental hygiene and toothbrushes, but it will be a parallel to talk about digital hygiene and the race against time. As a kid, you learned from your parents that you should brush your teeth twice a day, that you should floss, avoid eating candies, and if you do not do so, you will have cavities, you will have dental problems. It will hurt, you will have to take time and money to get it fixed by the dentist. But may I remind you that you only get one set of adult teeth for your whole life, so it is important to take care of them, and if you don't do so, you will get, in the end, false teeth or dentures. In France, despite being aware of the risks, most people, like half of the population, do not brush their teeth twice a day. 25% have declared that they had cavities in the past year, and dentists say that most people ignore how to properly use a toothbrush. One fun fact, during the first lockdown, sales of toothbrushes reduced by 43%. No comment. <laughs> Now, I would like to share with you a story to show you how the physical world and the digital world are intertwined. In 2016, Dropbox discovered breach that actually took place in 2012. 68 million accounts were stolen, personal files, photos. The investigation concluded that the hacker had actually used the login and password from a Dropbox employee that had been stolen in the previous breach. And that Dropbox employee was actually reusing the same credentials between work and personal life. If you do not pay attention to your digital hygiene, a small and painful incident can become an even bigger nightmare. Today, there are billions of customers and millions of companies that rely on the internet to transact and access service providers. More and more users are moving their data to the cloud. And each time they do so, they spread a little subset of the digital, digital identity. It is as if you were copying hundreds of versions of your identity card, your credit card, even your social security number. Think about it, your digital footprint is all over the place. In fact, the way identity is built on the internet is just plain wrong. In its current state, it's actually bad for the users. Think about each time you have the friction when you want to log in, to register, to pay online. As a user, you have no clue what type of data is being captured about you because on top of the personal data you willingly provide, providers will collect many more details about you, your device uh, type, your browsing history, your geographic location. Obviously, many companies monetize that data, either directly through advertisement or profiling, or indirectly. And in the end, this becomes uncontrollable as you have hundreds of copies of your digital identity scattered across the cloud. But in a sense, it's also bad for the providers themselves. They have the friction of the sign-up funnel, of the checkout funnel, which are key business issues for them. Regulations are increasing the risk and the li liabilities for those companies. I don't know if you're aware about things like GDPR or CCPA in California. And customers are becoming more and more wary about those companies. They feel like the internet is becoming sort of a dangerous place. Unfortunately, it's getting worse for everybody. People are using more devices than ever. The average is three devices. Every day, every year, you accumulate more credentials for your online services. The numbers are 150 to 200 per person. And the number of massive breaches out there is not stopping. The news are filled every day with new companies being hacked, new user data being leaked. Facebook, Clubhouse, Soloin, uh, Equifax, many, many more. Digital identity is just basically uh, broken. And finding a solution is really a, a race against time, against hackers also, and against uh, big tech giants of the world. In spite of it, uh, if you look at what users do, most of them resort, resort to very crude methods. 12% only will actually use tools such as password managers. 86% memorize simple passwords and reuse them everywhere. 49% write them down on paper. Few of them actually take action. 
it is as if users had decided that, well, it was the way things were, and they were okay to support the risk and the burden. And in a sense, it looks like the way we deal with our dental hygiene. Think of, about my toothbrushes. The, you know the risks, you know the best practices, you can learn those best practices at least, but no matter what, users have given up, in a sense. If you think about the, uh, the origin of the internet, identity was actually never part of it. In the view of the army with ARPANET or the academics, internet was supposed to be a trusted network. And so the technical building blocks, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, never really included the standard identity components, no, matter, no way of authenticating online. And even the, the evolution of web technologies didn't include identity as part of it. And when the internet boomed, it was kind of too late. There was an inflection point in 2007 with the appearance of smartphones that multiplied the number of access points to the internet. And SMS talk today about 50 billion connected devices that all have to handle some form of authentication or digital identity use case. Truth is, it is a hard problem to solve. Digital identity should be universal, it should be agnostic and work across any platform. The same way you use your passport to travel across the world to any country, we should have a digital equivalent. But the internet is totally fragmented. And the big tech companies, they are not the ones who are going to be able to solve it. They are too focused on their own wall garden, their own small territory, not really about fixing the broader issue. In a sense, it looks like the world of payment, which is also very fragmented. Think about cash, checks, credit cards, online payments, cryptocurrencies, and I'm not even talking about traditional currencies. Just to give you a sense, there are about 180 currencies in the world today. Biometry, the fact to use your fingerprints or your facial recognition, was supposed to be a savior. Unfortunately, well, biometric can be faked. That has been proven. Once your biometric data is compromised, what do you do? And biometry is device-specific. Unfortunately, no standard has emerged. And in the end, it just solved for one little use case of uh, digital identity around authentication. So that's clearly not enough. Another hope was that centralized identity system things like Facebook Connect or login with Google could be a solution. And it is uh, an improvement for the convenience of users. But the recent breaches have shown the limits of such a centralized identity system. When you aggregate the identity of millions and millions of users in the same place, well, it's just a question of time for that target, target to be massively breached. I had a few of my own passwords that were breached in the past, whether in that Dropbox breach or a more recent LinkedIn breach. Unfortunately for me, I had started paying attention to my digital hygiene. I had begun using a password manager, and with that toothbrush, I was able to generate a unique and complex passwords for all my online services. Today, I have more than 1,000 passwords in my password manager. Of course, I do not know any of them. I just remember my master password, which is the, the, the key to my digital vault. And whenever a site gets breached and one of my passwords gets leaked, I just change that one, and I reduce the risk. I still get email scams from hackers telling me, oh, uh, we have found uh, some of your passwords on the internet, but I just ignore them. And in a sense, I see the missions of password managers very much in the point of view of the dentist. The dentist will show you how to properly uh, use your toothbrush. It will explain to you the best practices. And even though you don't really like going to the dentist and you don't really like brushing your teeth, it is still today the best way to avoid cavities. But you do have to put in place that discipline, uh, introduce that discipline, figure out a way for you to put that discipline as a routine. Another metaphor I like to use is the car seat belt. Nobody today would think about not having a car seat belt on the highway. Why should it be the, not the same on the highway of the internet? In a sense, it's better to be safe than sorry, even if it costs us a little of effort. The issue is that users do not really care anymore. They constantly hear about so many breaches every day that they have stopped paying attention. They feel like they are unconcerned. A bit like the climate change news, the climate change crisis news. And we can see that behavioral change is very hard, even though we are aware of climate change issues, we are aware of the, the impact of car pollutions. There are only about 2% of electrical vehicles in the fleet today. 
And in a sense, uh, there is also a skepticism about potential solutions. And truth is, the, those electrical vehicles, they're not going to be enough to solve for the climate change crisis. But it's better than nothing. And in the same way, password managers are not going to be uh, the ideal solution for your digital hygiene, but it's still better than nothing. Of course, they can be hacked, they can be buggy, but the way they have been built, and we'll get into a bit of technical details, is that we will use the master password as the key to encrypt your data locally on your device, so that you always remain in control as a user with your data. This is what we call a zero-knowledge architecture. And it's a, a solution that is decentralized by design, which works across any platform, across any ecosystem. And I do believe it is important to be independent from those big tech companies, to, be, uh, to have a choice, in a sense. I like to think about it as the Switzerland of uh, GDL identity. So how does the future look like? I shared a lot of issues, but maybe there are solutions. Well, there are three main trends in the market today. The first one is finally the emergence of standards. Both Google and Apple have created their own proprietary solutions for their mobile ecosystems, iOS and Android. The W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, is promoting standards such as WebAuthn for the web. But none of those solution are, solutions are really universal yet. Some companies have been prototyping decentralized identity systems. There is, for instance, that concept of self-sovereign identity, the concept that an individual should be owning and controlling their data without an intervening administrative authority. And developers are playing with blockchain technologies applied to digital identity. And I hope that some of you students in the, in the, in the room will try this. And finally, some third-party solutions, such as password managers and SSO enterprise solutions, are trying to become digital identity providers. But it is still a niche market. None of them are really perfect. None are universal. And my belief is that technical solutions are not going to be enough to solve for broken digital identity. We need simpler, easy to use solutions that everybody can adopt. And in our optimized life of today, security and tech cannot be the only trigger. I like the quote from Ev Williams, who is the founder of Twitter and Medium. He says that convenience decides everything. Still, our individual efforts can make a collective impact. And that's why I would like to share with you what I personally do today to handle my digital hygiene, and also encourage you to move forward, to take steps yourself to, uh, to improve your digital hygiene. I obviously use a password manager, such as Dashlane. I use a safer browser called Brave, which is better for privacy. I have stopped using Google as a search engine. I actually use Ecosia. That's more for ecological impact, but there are plenty of uh, search engines out there with a privacy mindset. I deleted my Facebook account a while ago, and I migrated from WhatsApp to Signal. And I use an independent email provider called Fastmail instead of Gmail. In so doing, I have been regaining step-by-step -step control to my digital identity. And so can you. You can also improve the management and the ownership of your digital identity and help us make the internet a safer place. If I may conclude, I would like to use a kind of a provocative uh, parallel into today's pandemic world. Mankind was actually able to get rid of diseases such as smallpox by running massive vaccinations of, uh, campaigns of individual vaccinations. And I do believe our individual efforts can help us cure digital identi identity on the internet. I also hope that we can get rid of COVID very soon. It is high time to start brushing your teeth. Thank you for your attention.